reality television has become extremely popular over the last couple of decades. One of the reasons why it has is that it's very cheap to produce. Um, networks can um, produce multiple reality shows for the same cost that a scripted sitcom would be, and in some cases for much, much less. So there's an economic factor in all of this. But I also think they're tapping into something that's um, primal and not necessarily all that admirable. We do like seeing into the brokenness of one another. There is something titillating if I know about what's going on behind the scenes. And so to some extent, these programs, I think, are um, taking advantage of that and allowing us to see things that we ordinarily wouldn't see. And that can be, in a, a sort of perverse way, rather exciting. But I think there's another thing, too. It also is a sharing of the brokenness of the world. And as a Christian, and, I, and as I look at some of these shows, I realize that what really is also happening is there's sort of an assurance that I'm not the only one that's broken. As I watch these programs, I see that other people have some of the same problems, too. And I think that for lots of people, especially who aren't sure how to deal with brokenness or fallenness, there is somehow this, this sense of, I'm not alone in this. And therefore, I can feel a little bit better about it. Of course, that doesn't produce the solution to it. But nevertheless, it can make these programs extremely attractive. Um, and I think, too, that um, we can't be totally disdainful of them, because some of them do revealed to us some of the values and ideas and thinking about what's going on. One of the things I think, for example, that evangelical Christians have been slow to pick up on is the growing interest and yearning for spirituality in our world. Lots of young adults yearn for something that's out there. And although we may look at it and say they don't have the true God at the source of their yearning, they don't have the possibility of real forgiveness, of real eternal life, of real relationship with God. Nevertheless, that yearning sometimes comes through in some of these places. And picking up on that and understanding it seems to me to be something that we should be able to applaud and say, yes, that's built into you. God has created you in his image, and therefore it makes sense that you yearn after him. There, there are, I think, some risks to modern media. And um, I don't think these are risks that should cause us to move out to the woods and disconnect um, cable, necessarily. But I think to be aware of that, not only in reality TV that you were mentioning a minute ago, but in things like Facebook and Twitter and other, other places as well, there can grow up a sense that we are in community when, in fact, there's no community at all. Um, I know of people who haven't gone to church in years, but they consider themselves part of a church because they watch the worship service every Sunday morning. Um, well, in my reading of scripture, I would say that's not really church. For one thing, there's no sharing the sacrament. Um, there is no real interaction with people. And there's a certain messiness with interaction. I mean, let's face it. Not everybody that God calls to be part of this church is necessarily the sort of person I want to be the closest friends to. Families are messy, and this is the family of God. So I think that in a lot of these things, right, there can be a pseudo community, a pseudo relationship that, that grows up. And again, I use Facebook. I'm not saying that we shouldn't. But we should be aware of how these things come into our lives so that there can be a balance and so that we can be nurturing real community, nurturing real um, um, fellowship, nurturing times when I'm with a circle of friends around a dining room table sharing a good meal and recognizing that there is a quality to that, even if the discussion doesn't go very well, or the bread is burnt, or the roast isn't quite done. Even if not everything is that perfect that evening, there's a quality to that experience that I'm never going to have if I spend two hours on Facebook talking to friends, chatting with friends. It's a different sort of thing. There is an augmentation to reality in, uh, in Facebook and in these various things. We put up what we want people to see. We don't just share who we are completely. And of course, 
you know, let's face it, I looked in the mirror before I came to do this interview. I chose this jacket rather than another one. I put on certain clothes to go to church on Sunday morning. So to suggest that we never care about these things or should never care about these things as Christians is silly. Of course we do. Uh, and, the, and because we are embodied creatures, appearance makes a difference. There is a fine line, though, between that and living, a, um, living an existence which is unreal. It's totally fictional out there. Um, it seems to me that as Christians, we need to, first of all, allow for real safety in places. I want my living room to be the safest place in town. I want people to be able to come and sit there. And if they're having a time in which they're doubting the existence of God, they're doubting his goodness, I want them to feel safe enough to be able to say that. But I have to produce that safety. It isn't automatic. I have to think through, what does it mean to be safe? I need those kind of safe places, too, with people. So I think that in the midst of a culture where people are afraid to reveal themselves and where we spend a great deal of effort trying to look differently than we are, whether it's through the use of plastic surgery or whether it's the use of, of other things or just creating this fictional world in, in Facebook, I think as the people of God, we should be known as a place where you can be totally safe. You can come, you can be yourself, and we're not going to reject you because Christ is not. Um, yes, we are broken people together, and um, it's not totally pleasant always, but it can be met with grace. And it seems to me that that's very essential to what the gospel is.